Hi everyone, it's Lisa from A Simple Season. You know, a lot of us are taking steps to better weather life's ups and downs. And one of the many ways a lot of us do that is by storing away an extra stash of necessities. And one of the most important things that we put away is extra food. Because if we want to be able to get to the other side of a crisis, like say a job loss or a resource shortage, it's really good to not have to worry about the cupboards being bare. However, there are a few myths about storing food that need to be set straight. So let's get started. The first myth is you can store food anywhere you want. The big things that we want to avoid when we're storing food are heat, light, and moisture. These three things will degrade your food much more quickly if they are exposed to these things for any length of time. And I have seen photos and videos of food being stored on places like windowsills, above the stove, in a cupboard, or under a sink, or in a garage that has really big temperature fluctuations. There's no doubt that sometimes we have to get creative when we're looking for space to store food, especially if we live in a small living area and we have to make the most of the square footage that we have available to us. So make use of a dark closet or if you have a basement that you can store food in, that's great too. Just make sure that you're putting things on a shelf and you're not storing things directly on a concrete floor in a basement and if you have no choice but to put things on the floor make sure you're putting down maybe a few layers of cardboard so that things aren't sitting directly on the hard cold concrete and it just gives you a little bit of an extra buffer for more temperature control. The other misconception is that beans and rice will last forever. Well, not exactly. There is no question that things like rice and other grains will last a very long time if they are packaged up correctly with oxygen absorbers and mylar bags or in glass jars, but there's a limit even to that. If they're stored for decades, they will break down eventually. And beans aren't really that much better because the longer you have them around, the harder and more difficult they are to cook, as in they won't soften up very well. The other thing with beans is after you've stored them for three years, their nutritional value starts to degrade. And after five years, their nutritional value is very low. So if you like to store beans and you like to have lots of them on hand, just buy whatever it is that you think you can store and consume within a few years and rotate your stock through. The third myth is that you need to buy lots of pre-packaged, freeze-dried, ready-to-eat meals. These kinds of products are marketed as some of the longest lasting foods out there and they come packaged in buckets that you can stack wherever you have space and they're ready to go. And the pros are they are convenient and they do last a long time. The cons, in my opinion, is that they are very high in salt. They usually have a lot of preservatives and chemicals in them. They're expensive and you need a ton of water to prepare them. They can be a good option for you if you just want to have something that you don't want to have to worry about. But in my case, I would prefer to just store whole food ingredients that I can make a number of meals with. The fourth thing is people will eat anything if they're hungry enough. Well, it depends. Years ago, I do remember reading a story about people who were desperate for sustenance ended up pickling tumbleweeds so that they would have something to eat during the Dust Bowl. That's pretty desperate. But if you have the opportunity now, choose and buy foods that you like and are willing to eat. So don't go out and buy peanut butter if you don't like it. It's bad enough when you're going through a challenge that you have to end up eating food that you don't enjoy. So buy what you enjoy, buy what you like, and eat what you store and store what you eat. Number five. You only need enough food and water for 72 hours. Years ago, I remember getting a pamphlet in the mail from the Ministry of Public Safety recommending that everyone have a 72 hour emergency kit in their home. I think three days is a really good place to start, but 
if you have any kind of a situation like a natural disaster, it is not going to cut it. Because as a lot of you know, if you're in a situation where there's a hurricane, a flood, an earthquake, it can sometimes take weeks for people to reach people who are in need. So 72 hours is a great start, but if you have three to four weeks of supplies in your home that you can rely on that will take you through most natural disasters. And if you end up having a personal crisis, like a financial crisis or anything like that, a stock of three to six months will take you through most of those situations as well. Aim for whatever you wanna be prepared for in your home and figure out the length of time would be best for you and figure out how you can achieve that goal. Number six, the expiration date is king. There was a time in my life that if I found anything in my cupboards that was one month past the expiration date, I would throw it out. And I hate to think now how much money and food I wasted doing that. So my attitude towards expiration dates has shifted radically with a few caveats, of course. But I'll share with you my experience with expiration dates. So dry goods like flour, cornmeal, um, rice, oats, that kind of thing has been just fine if that product has been stored in like a glass jar or even a Tupperware container with a tight fitting lid. I've been able to use those products two years past the date with no problem at all. Now, obviously, if you want to use oxygen absorbers with a glass jar, then you're golden. You can, you know, use those products for years and years past the date. Um, things like canned corn I've used past the date by a couple of years. Canned tomatoes I've used a year or so past the date. The only thing I've noticed a difference with was I did have a can of green beans that was a year past the best buy date and I did use it and it tasted fine, but the only difference I noticed was that the green beans were definitely a little bit softer than what I was used to. Still safe to eat, just a difference in texture for that particular item. I also recently made a video where I made a cake mix that I found in the back of my pantry that expired in June of 2020 and it turned out fine but I have to say my mom outdid me on this one because she recently made a cake mix that she found that expired in 2015 and it was kind of funny because she baked it up and it was my mom and my brother and me sitting in her kitchen and we're all kind of looking at this cake saying like, should we try it or are we gonna find three dead people on the floor of this kitchen? Anyways, in the spirit of science, we all decided to try it. And to be quite honest, it tasted just like any other box cake I've ever had in my entire life. And clearly we're all still alive and we're still here. So it turned out okay. But I must say though, even though we make light of things like this, there are a few caveats. First, look at the packaging. If you have a can of something, look it over. Is it bulging? Is it dented? Is it starting to rust? If it is, throw it out. If you open up the can with a can opener and you hear any kind of a hissing sound, chuck it. If you've got dry goods, look at the packaging. Is there a plastic bag? Is there a hole in it? All of these things allow pests into your product, so get rid of it. Just look over the packaging, make sure everything is airtight. If everything is sealed up well and the integrity of the package looks good, it's probably just fine to use. Number seven is that if you have six months worth of food stored away, you're done. A common misconception is that we think sometimes if we have a certain amount of food put away that we're comfortable with, we just never have to use it or look at it again until there's some type of emergency and we need to use it at that point. But the reality is it's really good to have your pantry be a working pantry so that you're constantly using, rotating, and replacing your items on a regular basis. This makes your pantry more of a curated thing that you're constantly looking over and using and that way you have the freshest supply of stock available and you know like what you're eating and what you're liking and what you're enjoying and it's constantly evolving like a kind of a living thing. So 
it's good to use what you store and it's okay to rely on your pantry if you need to that's why it's there just make sure you're rotating and replacing as much as you possibly can so go ahead and boop the like button if you thought these myth busting tips were worthwhile and let me know in the comments what your experiences are with foods that were expired that were still good to eat or maybe you had some beans that you cooked up after a number of years and they worked out okay for you it's important to keep the discussion going and that we help each other out so thank you so much for joining in stay well everyone and we'll catch you in the next one